I wanted to learn a bit more about the strike in Sweden. Did we have any strikes in Sweden there? The employees did not want to join the union or uh, to form a collective agreement. And it turns out there is a case like that. And here's what happened. I am going to show you an archived piece of news from the union itself, basically. This is from 1999. The union writes in the book that it is inappropriate to threaten conflict when the industrial action is not anchored among the members. This is exactly what's happening right now with Tesla. In the worst case, it can lead to the members leaving the union, which also happened at Ferita. The conflict at Ferita began in the fall of 1997. The employees at the metal company in this particular town did not want to fight for a collective agreement. Despite this, IF Metal announced a blockade against the company. Sounds so familiar. It all ended with Metal's members at the company, five of the 19 employees were members, leaving the union and Metal had to withdraw its notice without having received a collective agreement. It's almost like I just saw the future, I mean the past, which really is the future <laughs> that is uh, coming here, but the union did not learn its lesson. Out of all of the people to bully, I think Elon Musk is probably the absolute worst person that you can pick to bully. I think Elon Musk has made it very clear that he is not afraid of losing money. He is not afraid of dying even. He, he made that very clear recently. And Elon Musk loves to have an enemy that he can fight with. I think that really inspires him and it really motivates him. If you haven't read the biography from Walter Isaacson about Elon Musk, I highly suggest that you read it, especially if you are heavily invested in Tesla's stock. It will give you a much better, that, that's like the best thing to understand Tesla and Elon Musk uh, that you can study. If you ever struggle with motivation, here's one major hack that you can use. You know how you hear people saying, oh, you know, you should just focus on the positive things and uh, do affirmations about how great you will be one day? Waste of time. To some degree, it can work for a little while, but I'm telling you, if you write down every single thing that someone said about you, how miserable you're going to be, how you are not able to work hard, how you are lazy, how you will never amount to anything ever in your life. Write down every single insult, the nastier the better, and then read it, and then do something about it. To some degree, I think you need to be careful about this dark motivation, but it is some serious driving force for endless motivation. So to some degree, I actually really don't mind and, um, in some way, I think it's even useful to, well, for me to have critics, because if someone calls me lazy, I'm going to say, well, okay, well, watch me work seven days per week. Sadly, though, no one calls me lazy anymore. Except me. Sometimes I call myself lazy. Which is actually <laughs> quite motivating. Now, I, th I think uh, this sort of talk doesn't work for everyone. If uh, if you don't have much confidence, and if you tell yourself, "Oh, you're you're lazy, you're 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 dumb, you're stupid, you will never amount to anything," if you don't have any confidence at all, then I think that works. That uh, that's not a positive for you. But for someone like me, I think that actually works really well because it's actually I don't think it's confidence that I have um, necessarily that helps with that. I think it's mostly being competitive. I am extremely competitive. My childhood though was fairly good. So I don't have any demons in my head like um, Elon has, at least Walter Isaacson says that Elon Musk has uh, this demon mode. His father was extremely abusive. I had a great fa father. I had a great mother. I have uh, great brothers. My family uh, overall has been uh, really great. Not to say that everything was perfect because uh, I pretty much had no money at all <laughs> growing up, like none. When I say uh, I had no money growing up, I mean, I remember my mom once, my parents divorced when I was four and I lived with my mom. My mom, and I was maybe uh, seven, I remember one day uh, she worked at the restaurant as a waitress. She got extra tips, tips that day and she brought like three bananas. And I was like, oh, this is, 
the best food I've ever tasted. Eating oranges, eating bananas, every day was a huge luxury. I remember this month then, I was able to eat bananas and oranges every single day. That was life-changing for me. Just to be clear, we never had any shortage of food, so I was never hungry. I would only be hungry if I was like, eh, I'm not eating these potatoes or that rice or these uh, black beans. I'm just saying, I couldn't have gone bananas by eating bananas every single day because these were a bit too expensive for us at the, at the time. But my mom, I think, did a great job. I love my mom so much. And, but I have that drive to never go back to that ever again where I'm not able to buy bananas if I want to eat bananas every single day. But growing up, actually, the food was great because my mom worked as a waitress and there would be leftover food left at the restaurant by the end of the day every single day. So we had lots of food. I'm just saying certain delicacies like bananas to me, I really like bananas and oranges and stuff like that were a big deal. Larry just tested Tesla's High Fidelity 360 uh, parking assist. He wanted to find out that the distance displayed here is accurate. And he actually got out of the car and he measured the distance or someone else measured for him. And he said that the distance was actually accurate. One more thing that is really cool is that you can see the wheels turn. Larry says he has used several 360 degree systems in the past and he can say that this was as good if not better in some respect. So that's good news.